problem. Work environment. Yeah, work, work environment. environment. Pro propeller. <laughs> propeller motivated aircraft. Yeah. And I have to tell you, they really bother me. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because after they get out of maintenance, they take it out there in the taxiway and wind go, it up forever and ever, and they never blow up. Mm. It's amazing. It's like those little rubber band airplanes. I was going to use one of them as a cover on here, but I decided. <laughs> no, that's, that's why I send you the. No, that, the well, that. But you have to understand something. That wasn't the prop car that you told me that we were going to do. <laughs> well, that looks like a prop car. No, that's a propeller car. Well, here's Jeff with this week's big inside Jeff's mind. Close the there door. You go. Here we go. They're cool, except for the blades, uh, which could quickly dissect unsuspecting birds, critters, or even people. This first one that we see here is a 1932 Helicron. The Helicron was found in a barn in the year 2000. It featured a propeller to help That's it move. That's exactly like that aircraft yep. out there on oh, the runway I was just telling better. you about. <laughs> it's believed to have been abandoned in the late 1930s and underwent a restoration to bring it back to Why? life. Why? The propellers would have proved to be a real man-eater. At yeah. a test in, night, in 2016, bystanders would throw sausages into the motion <laughs> of the blade and let, let the sausages get all shredded up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great. It actually has a Citroen. July 4th idea. Yeah, Citroen GS flat four engine in it, and it goes about 75 oh, miles per Citroen. hour. Citroen. You're talking about a Citroen. Citroen. Yes. Citroen. One of them French things. Yep. How this, about this beauty here? It's a 1921 Layet Helica. The 1921 <laughs> Layet Helica is one of 30 built by Frenchman Marcel Layet. He originally built airplanes before creating the propeller-powered land vehicle. His early thoughts were cars were too heavy, and he wanted to create something more lightweight and aerodynamic. This particular one uses a Harley-Davidson V-twin engine, 18 horsepower, 1,000 cc's, and it helps propel the vehicle at a top speed of 106 miles per hour. Hour. So I assume that the propeller is in front of the driver. I yeah, yeah I would assume that, yeah. Here's a good one. This one's a Stuttgart Ventomobile. Stuttgart, Stuttgart. Stuttgart Ventomobile. Uh, this one is powered. Uh, it's a newer propeller operated vehicle. This is one of the newer ones. Uh, the propeller acts as a wind turbine and uses moving air to propel the car in the back wheels. So that's, that's kind of a unique design. It's kind of new. Um, huh. This uh, the vehicle was created by the Stuttgart University Aerospace. So do you get out and push it to get the, the wind that, to go I, through the I, blade? I, or? I don't know, but we need to take it out to uh, uh, the track next Saturday. Uh, yeah. Stuttgart University Aerospace Engineer students in 2008 designed it, and they went on to win first place in the Elias race of the Dutch town of Dan Helder. So I remember that. I remember out. old Dan. I think he was a musician. This next one is a Schlorwagen. A what? A Schlorwagen. Schlorwagen. <laughs> automobile is a vision brought to life by a German engineer, Karl Schlor. Uh, the man. oddly shaped car was designed to be a Looks contender like a for setting new <laughs> records in the Autobahn. Sadly, it never got close to living to that dream. Uh, Schlor it's had got a, a lot real of, sour taste I to it. No, it's picklish. Uh, knowledge of planes and wanted to bring some of that to the tech auto industry. The original concept was built in 1936 and showcased at the 1939 Berlin Auto Show. It was shelved due to the onset of World War II. Yeah. So if the war hadn't started, you would be seeing these. They could have gone over there and mowed and down all those Germans. All of the Walmart parking them all lots up right around in the world. There. It would have been parked there. All kinds of stuff. Now the last one is an Argentina aero car. Uh, it's a prototype from Argentina that was created in 1953. There are claims that it was able to travel up to 100 miles per hour. There was a time when there was speculation that it would be considered for mass production in the United States, which never happened. Uh, also, there was rumors fueled that uh, interest by the Chrysler Corporation showed in the car that would ultimately meet its demise in 1955. So it was actually a car up until 1955. There you go. Huh. Propeller-driven automobiles. I have so many thoughts in my mind right now about what to do with the <laughs> prop cars. Prop cars. <sighs> you know, uh, it's interesting. Where did you come up with the, that idea to, to do a feature on propeller cars? I just do stuff on the interweb and kind of look for things to do, and that popped up. Hey, one of the he does a search for stupid car stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's hey, interesting. It's, it's funny. It's, it's nothing to complain about. I'm not complaining okay. at all. I'm uh, congratulating. Not since 938. Not, no, well, there you go. So, 
If folks are just joining us, you need to tune back into the 938 part oh, of the show. Yeah, don't do that. Catch it on when, the podcast. Catch it on the podcast catch later on. Catch it on the podcast. When, when would the 938 podcast uh, uh, air, be, Mars? Thursday? Is Thursday? Thursday. 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 Thursday podcast, okay. Hey, today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station. Also, Gulf Coast Auto Shield and our friends over at Pro-Am Auto Accessories. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Here we go. 